Simulan mong abutin ang iyong pangarap Na magbibigay danga sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin Hindi laging nandyan dapat mong harapin Kami iyong kasama sa bawat takin Magkaakbay nating lulutasin Dito sa Gagabay sa iyong pagkamulat Naway umukit ito sa iyong isipan Maging mapanuri Sundin ang wasto at nararapat Kagandahang nasal ang ipakita Ipadama ang pusong may malasakit Dito sa Fernandino Ating harapin ng walang takot Sasamahan ka ni Fernan At dino ang bagong barkada mo Fernandino Tint TV Anong ginagawa ninyo, Fer at Dino? Si Dino kasi, nagtatanong kung anong interpretasyon ko sa kanyang sinabi. Nagtataka kasi siya, bakit parang galit ang kanyang nanay nang sagutin niya ito? Ano bang sinabi mo sa nanay mo, Dino? Tinanong ko kasi siya kung anong gusto kong ulam. Sinagot ko naman siya, pero parang nagtampo eh. Hmm, sige nga. Ulitin mo ang paraan ng iyong pagsabi, pati na ang tono ng boses mo nang sumagot ka. Nay, kung sasabihin ko ba kung ano ang gusto ko, meron tayo? Ah, magtatampo nga sa yun nanay mo, Dino. Sana sinagot mo siya ng maayos at sinabi mo na lang kung ano ang gusto mo sa maayos at malambing na tono. Hindi yung parang galit ka pa, ikaw na ang nilalambing at tinatanong sa kung ano ang gusto mong ulam eh. Ganun ba? Naku, hindi ko naman sinasadya, pero nasaknan ko ang damdamin ng aking mahal na ina. Ano kaya ang dapat kong gawin? Tamang-tama, aralin natin ang tamang komunikasyong interpersonal para lalo nating mapagbuti ang ating komunikasyon sa ating mga kakilala at mga mahal sa buhay. Mabuti pa! Ating pakinggan at panoorin ang ariliin sa araw na ito para matutuhan ang mga akmang gawi tuwing tayo ay may kausap. Tara! Let's watch and learn! Good day, dear students. Welcome to Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. I am Romil Di Sabado, your language teacher for today. For this episode, we will have an interesting journey about language and communication. As we go through with this presentation, we will discover a variety of strategies for effective interpersonal communication. But before we proceed with the main topic, let us use our imagination and think of this scenario. Imagine a world without language. Or imagine a world 
without any form of communication. What kind of a world would it be? What do you think will happen? Chaotic, I suppose. It will be a disaster, don't you think so? Without the language that we use, it will be hard for us to understand one another or to be understood by people around us because we use language to communicate and connect ourselves with people and with our loved ones. Language helps us to express our feelings, our thoughts, and our ideas. That is why language is very important for all of us. However, every day, Though we always use language for communication, we talk to our friends, family members, neighbors, but we hardly realize the great wonders and importance of language. Language is now being less and less appreciated. But let me tell you this. There is a way where we can show appreciation and give value to our language. Do you want to know how? We show appreciation and give value to our language by using language appropriately and wisely. And that will be our subject matter for today, which is titled, Using Words and Actions Appropriately, Path Towards Becoming a Good Communicator. We'll focus on one of the most essential learning competencies, which is employ a variety of strategies for effective interpersonal communications. The learning objectives which will support our MELF for this episode are Number 1. Identify ways to improve interpersonal communication. Number 2. Employ 5 strategies for effective interpersonal communications in interviews, dialogues, and conversations. Number 3. Differentiate intrapersonal and interpersonal communication. We use language for communication, and communications happen in different forms. It involves sending and receiving information. When communication takes place between and among people, interpersonal communication happens. But what is interpersonal communication. Interpersonal communication is the process of exchange of information, ideas, feelings, and meanings between two or more people through verbal and or nonverbal methods. Verbal communication includes the exchange done with spoken words. This means what we say or how we say it. Let me give you an example. Let us use the word yes. Listen to how the word yes is uttered and how the intonation changes its meaning. Ready? Yes. Yes. Did you notice the difference? According to Albert Moravian, words or what we say make up 7% of communication, while our tone of voice, poses, rhythm, or how we say it make up 38% of our communication. The latter is also known as paraverbal communication. On the other hand, when communicating, we do not only use verbal method of communication, but we also use actions or gestures in order for us to express our feelings, thoughts, and ideas. This is known as the nonverbal method. Nonverbal communication constitutes 55% of interpersonal communication. Our action speaks volume and is a key aspect in communication. When we are silent, we are still communicating a message. Let me give you an example. Nonverbal method of communication. Do you know what is the meaning of this gesture? Do 
Very good. The answer is yes or okay. See, even without using words, we can still send our message across by means of actions or gestures. Let us have another example. How about this? What do you think is the meaning of this action? If you answered letter A, you are correct. The gesture demonstrates an angry stance. You were able to identify the meaning of my action and determine the feeling or mood expressed. This time, let us see if you can get the meaning of the given verbal and nonverbal cues in each of the given examples. Activity number one, getting the message. Getting the message verbally is often easy, but there are some messages in sentences that are not literally stated. Identify these messages by the context of each sentence. Choose your answer from the word pool. Number one, let's grab a bite. What do you think is the meaning of this sentence? Correct. It is, I am a bit hungry. How about number two? You should pick at the pace. What is your answer? Yes. The answer is, go faster to make it on time. Let us try number three. Let's keep this between us. You are doing well, Fernandino Teens. The answer is, keep it a secret. At this point, we will have the activity for nonverbal communication. And tell us, what is the meaning of each of the following gesture or action? Ready? Number one, what do you think is the meaning of this gesture? That is correct. Clip expresses doubt, ignorance, or indifference. Let's move to number two. How about this? What do you think is the meaning of this action or gesture? Nice one, Fernandino teens. This hand gesture signifies being in a hurry. Let's try the last one. Excellent. This form of body language may signify doubt, uncertainty, or confusion. Way to go, Fernandino teens! The activities we have just had help us determine and recognize messages expressed both verbally and non-verbally. Remember, verbal and non-verbal communication help us to send our feelings, thoughts, and ideas to the receiver of information. So we better use them appropriately. Is everything clear so far? Good. We will pause this conversation for a while for a short break. And when we return, we will talk about how we can improve our skill in interpersonal communication. So please don't change your channel. Fernandino Teen Season 2 will be right back. Ang Schools Division Office City of San Fernando, Pampanga ay kaisa ng Department of Education sa pagsasagawa ng mga proyekto at programa na tumutugon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga mag-aaral. Inilunsad ang Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors upang magbigay ng educational at psychological assistance sa mga mag-aaral, magulang at stakeholders ng division. Kaya, 
Kung may nais kayong itanong tungkol sa pag-aaral, maaaring magpadala ng mensahe sa Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors Facebook page o tumawag sa mga numero na makikita sa ibaba ng inyong screen tuwing lunes hanggang biyernes sa ganap na alas 8 ng umaga hanggang alas 6 ng gabi. Maaari rin kayong sumangguni sa ating guidance counselors na nagbibigay ng guidance and counseling services. Lahat ng inyong ibabahagi ay mananatiling confidential. Ang nasabing programa ay nagsisilbing daan upang malaman ang feedbacks ng stakeholders para matulungan ang ating division na mapagbuti pa ang mga sumusunod na programa. Ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Tumawag na sa aming mga numero o bumisita na sa aming Facebook page at magpadala ng inyong mga katanungan. Fernandino Tint TV You are still tuned in to Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. A while ago, we discussed verbal and nonverbal messages. Do you know that there is another language to communicate? Yes, aside from the spoken words, you have some classmates, friends, relatives, or acquaintances who actually use this language. This language is called sign language. What is sign language? Is it a nonverbal language? Did you know that what has been discovered over the past half century is that sign language is a language itself? This reveals that human language to be more flexible than had been imagined, and language is able to exist in either auditory or visual in form. It shows that the human drive for language is so strong that when deafness makes speech inaccessible, it finds another channel, creating language in sign. Sign language has taught us human language can be used in speech or sign. It is a living testament to the fact that language is what we all need to be human. It is an effective communication tool that can be used to convey not only what a person wants to say, but it also has nonverbal cues. A person who can understand sign language can also pick up on how a person is feeling by the way they speak using sign language. This time, we will try to learn some of the basic words using sign language. I do really feel excited about this. Are you ready? Let us watch a special education teacher as she teaches how to speak using sign language. As you imitate the action or gesture, please observe the nonverbal aspect of the language. Just like any other spoken language, sign language is used to convey feelings, 
thoughts and other information to the receiver. There are many variations of sign language, all of which help connect people and give everyone a chance to be heard. Sign language is an important communication tool that can help bridge barriers between people who can speak verbally and people who cannot. And for you, Fernandino teens, I hope that we find interest in learning sign language so we'll be able to communicate to our classmates, friends, relatives, or acquaintances who use nonverbal method or sign language as their means of communication. Got it? Okay, let me check. Is everything clear so far? Excellent! Now that we know the two forms of interpersonal communication, the verbal and nonverbal communication, let us talk about the five steps on improving interpersonal communication. Let's have number one. Be cognizant of yourself or be aware of yourself. Number two, be conscious, respectful, and empathic towards others. Number three, actively listen to others. Number four, avoid talking over others or speaking for them. Number five, collaborate more by saying yes before saying no. Let us discuss them one by one. Let's have number one, be cognizant or be aware of yourself. Being aware of your own emotion and your own nonverbal gestures can significantly benefit your interpersonal communication skills. Being cognizant of oneself means having self-awareness. It is knowing and understanding how your words, behavior, and reactions may affect other people you are communicating with. Number two, be conscious respectful, and empathetic towards others. Everyone is entitled to his own thoughts and opinions, which may differ from yours. When you employ positive interpersonal skills, you allow others to express themselves without automatically jumping on them, showing that you are genuinely listening to what they have to say. Number three. Actively listen to others. Active listening helps us to get the complete meaning of the message, aiding us to give the accurate feedback and to promote effective interpersonal communication. Listening is a skill that must be developed and honed. Number four, avoid talking over others or speaking for them. It is easy to unintentionally jump in and accidentally cut someone off while they are speaking. However, when this happens on a regular basis, it shows a lack of listening skills and can be perceived as not value what they have to say. Number five, collaborate more by saying yes before saying no. It is about saying yes and building on it rather than shutting down the conversation with a no. The word yes allows you to serve others, to make a difference, to collaborate successfully, and to increase your influence. This time, try to determine whether each of the following situations promotes effective interpersonal communication. Click the thumbs up hand signal if it promotes interpersonal communication or thumbs down if it does not. Let's have this activity. Do the thumbs up and thumbs down. For number one, maintaining eye contact during a conversation. Is it thumbs up or thumbs down? Excellent. It is thumbs up. Number two, insisting your opinion on others because for you, it is right. What is your answer? 
thumbs up or thumbs down. If your answer is thumbs down, you are correct. All of us should respect each other's opinion and beliefs. Number three, clarify some things if you do not understand what the person is trying to say. What is your answer? The answer is definitely thumbs up. Always ask for a clarification if you fail to get the message. Let's have number four. Monopolize the discussion by doing all the talking. Guess, is it a thumbs up or thumbs down? This is a clear thumbs down. To develop your interpersonal communication skills, you must not only be well-versed in expressing your ideas, but also respectful of recognizing the rights of other people to have their turn to be heard. Let's have number five. Texting while talking to a friend is acceptable. Is it thumbs up or thumbs down? This is a thumbs down. Texting while talking to your friend will give the latter the idea that you are bored or not at all interested to the conversation. Well done, Fernandina teens. You have just learned some steps on how to improve interpersonal communication. We will find out more about effective interpersonal communication when Fernandino Teens TV returns. Stay tuned! May pa oras kaya kayo, Fernandinos? Ako pala ay Elwin Arlserano ng City Tourism Office ng Ciudad San Fernando. Ngayon ng bulan na ini, pag masusyan tayo ang National Heritage Month, nating temang Victory and Humanity, Upholding Filipino Heritage and Identity. Kambe na nini, metong karang aktibidades na ng Ciudad, apin ng launching ng Bayong Heritage Passport. Ng Heritage Passport, apin ng metong karang proyekto ng kaya katamong Ciudad, ng pamanamuna ng Mayor Edwin D. Santiago. Anong nuka rin makalagelangan ding eganagan ng heritage sites, heritage structures, na akit tamo kin kay katamong heritage district. Makakayado din kay ni, ding importansya da ding mapay na tradisyon, kay ni syudad, kalupa na ning pamangawang parol, ang po yung pamangalesa. May aho siyang heritage passport, uling atin kang dapat gawan, Anong nuka rin puntalan mula ding at syukin passport at saka ka mag-selfie kay ba't kanta palto making tourism office at mamiyalang sticker ka rin ega na galang apuntulan mong lugar at di mong may ngari ang tutong passport. Balumingin ni, panahon na ini, eta mo makain visa lumal uli na ning COVID-19 pandemic. Kaya naman kimbanwa ngay ni, agkatan ko la ding bikers tamo edad 18 hanggang 50 Imbis na lumawot kayo po, di na nyo lang dita ka oras di kaya katamang heritage structures kaya ni Siudad. Anya naman ka rin mumunang 50 bikers ang makayari kaya katamang heritage passport, may di na lang premium only San Fernando loot bag. Inggawan nyo mo bakit na makapag-register, munta kayo mismo opisina na ng City Tourism, yung munisipyo, at saka kayo magdalang metong valid ID. Kabihan ninyo kayo yung heritage passport, ating makasipit ang instruction nung nano pa yung dapat gawan. Anya naman ka rin hanggang kapadyakin, na nano ko pa, tara na! TV. Welcome back, Fernandino Teens. Let us now dig deeper on our topic as we examine factors or reasons why interpersonal communication fails. 
Interpersonal communication is often defined as communication that takes place between people who are interdependent and have some knowledge of each other. For example, communication between a son and his father, an employer and an employee, two sisters, a teacher and a student, two lovers, two friends, and so on. To help us understand this better, we must identify the hindering factors so we could remove or avoid them. Here are the assumptions on interpersonal communication. An interpersonal motive is always inherent in the mind of the sender of any interpersonal communication process. This motive may not always be expressed. It may remain in the subconscious mind of the sender. Many receivers can guess the inherent interpersonal motives of sender consciously or unconsciously. This supposition of receiver is known as interpersonal perception. This interpersonal perception of receiver creates a reaction or sentiment in the mind of the receiver. Receiver's sentiment again influences his interpersonal communication motives. The following are a few of the many factors that hinder interpersonal communication. Lack of communication skill may hinder interpersonal communication. Inaccurate interpersonal perception of the receiver can also create hindrance in communication. This problem may occur at the time of decoding the message. If the receiver holds wrong perception, stereotyping attitude towards the message. Non-recognition of emotion. Since emotion is an inborn factor of human being, it is regarded as intrapersonal element of communication. If emotions of both parties are not duly identified during communication, communication will fail. How are intrapersonal and interpersonal communications differ from each other? As the term intra means within, so the communication that takes place within a person is called intrapersonal. While the term inter means between, so when the communication occurs between two or more persons, it is said to be interpersonal communication. The main difference between interpersonal and intrapersonal is intrapersonal happens between two or more people whereas intrapersonal happens within one's own inner self. Thus, intrapersonal is always known as self-communication. In establishing effective communication, both the sender and receiver should be aware of and attentive to their intrapersonal and interpersonal elements. Let us compare them. Interpersonal skills allow us to build relationships with others, while intrapersonal skills help us communicate with ourselves. In the process of intrapersonal communication, you are the sender and recipient at the same time. During interpersonal communication, you deliver your message to others. Interpersonal communication is an ongoing process since a person consistently reflects, analyzes, and interprets actions and events. While interpersonal communication occurs only with an interlocutor, Interpersonal communication involves focusing on your own feelings and inner experiences. Moreover, interpersonal one allows you to take into account the opinions and emotions of other people. There are various media involved to express one's ideas, but most basic are verbal and nonverbal communication. Interpersonal communication skills are seen in group discussions, dialogues, debates, public speaking, and daily life conversations. Some examples of interpersonal skills include active listening, responsibility, 
dependability, leadership, motivation, flexibility, and patience. Either personal skills are traits you rely on when you interact and communicate with others. They cover a variety of scenarios where communication and cooperation are essential. Having learned about the factors that hinder interpersonal communication, let us see if you can apply them in a given scenario. The title of our activity is, What Should You Do? For our instruction, choose the appropriate thing to do in each of the given scenarios or situations. How should one start a conversation? Pick three effective practical tips, right in any order. A. Pay a compliment. B. Speak pleasantly. Letter C. Keep quiet and observe the whole time. Letter D. Say something that the person will be happy to hear. We can start the conversation by doing letters A, B, and D. Next one, what kind of effective communication starter is applied in the text below? Did you used to work with Roger? He and I have done several projects together. For letter A, mentioning a mutual acquaintance. B, soliciting an opinion. Letter C, offering assistance. What is your answer? Wonderful. The answer is letter A. Moving on, the following apply the strategy. Being conscious, respectful, and empathetic toward others. Except A. This dip is delicious. Letter B. I think the speaker is boring. Letter C. Did you hear the keynote? I thought it was great. If your answer is letter B, you chose the correct answer. This statement did not apply being conscious and respectful towards others. How about the next one? How would you show interest to what is being said when you are having a conversation with someone? Letter A. Occasionally ask questions when you need a clarification. Letter B. Stay silent the whole time while the other party is talking. How about letter C? Use your phone while the other party is talking. What is your answer? Great answer, Fernandino teens. It is letter A. If you are really listening, you must be able to give comments or ask questions on the topic at hand. Let's have the next one. Which of the following actions show respect towards the speaker? Letter A, interrupting the speaker when you have an important question because you might forget it if you do not ask right away. Letter B, wait for the speaker to give signal when it is possible to ask questions. Or letter C, start a conversation with one sitting next to you since the topic does not interest you. What is your answer? If your answer letter B, you are demonstrating respect. Moving on. Number eight, what should you do when you find yourself disagreeing with what other person is saying. Letter A, say little or nothing. B, point out that the person is wrong and explain why. Letter C, listen first, ask for clarification and then disagree without being judgmental. Good job, Fernandino Tins. The answer is letter C, 
Letter C shows maturity in expressing disagreement with other person. Let's have number nine. When you are having a conversation with some friends, you, A, monopolize the whole conversation, B, leave the talking to your friends and say nothing at all, C, try to engage everybody into the conversation. What is your answer? The answer is letter C. Conversations with friends must be equally enjoyed by everybody. Each member has the right to be heard. And for the last number, number 10, what would you do when you have the negative comment or opinion? Letter A, we just say it. Letter B, you say nothing at all. Letter C, you start by saying your positive comment first. Excellent. It is letter C. When you have to give a comment, especially a negative one, it will help if you start with a positive comment first. It is indeed an eye-opener to realize that unconsciously we are sending messages to other people through our gestures or body language and the tone of our voice. Being aware of these things you would be conscious with the way you react and try to school your responses. Is everything clear so far, Fernandina teens? When we come back, you will learn more about intrapersonal and interpersonal communication and how you can observe these types in improving your communication skills. All of this when Fernandino Teens TV Season 2 returns. Lamang sa larangan ng pangkabuhayan apektado ang maraming pamilyang Pilipino, kundi maging sa larangan ng pagkatuto ng bawat batang Pilipino. Inilunsad ng siyudad ng San Fernando ang programa Nurturing Environment and System for Thriving or NEST, isang education community pantry na naglalayon para sa isang malawakang pagtulong, pagtabay at paggabay na ang focus ay ang makapagbigay ng tulong at suporta sa ating mga mag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng educational needs gaya na lamang ng school supplies, tutorial sessions, study tips, at iba pang mga pamamaraan na mas lalong makatutulong sa pag-angat ng ating edukasyon. Dahil hindi hadlang ang pandemya sa magandang kinabukasang naghihintay sa ating mga mag-aaral. Sino-sino nga ba ang mga kalahok sa programang ito? Sa pagtutulungan ng ating school administrators, guro, magulang, at iba pang mga miyembro ng ating komunidad gaya ng barangay officials at sangguniang kabataan, ay siguradong magiging mas matagumpay ang programang ito. Paano nga ba ang magiging proseso ng naturang programa? Una, magkakaroon tayo ng isang Facebook group, ang Pampanga High School Nest Education Community Pantry na pangungunahan ng Educational Pantry Coordinator. Ang mga magulang, tagapangalaga at mga guro ay ia-add ng ating Educational Pantry members sa Facebook group na ito. Sa page na ito, maaaring i-post ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga o sino mang miyembro ng Educational Pantry ang kanilang mga kahilingan o requests. Kailangan ding ilagay ang pangalan ng mag-aaral, grade at section para sa mas agarang aksyon. Oo nga pala, hindi lang requests ang pwedeng i-post. Pwede rin mag-post ang mga nais magbigay ng tulong o mga gustong mag-donate. Sabi nga nila, sharing is caring. Pandaan na ang Facebook group na ito ay pribado at posts na may kaugnayan lamang sa page na ito ang maaaprobahan. Mayroon din palang Google Form na ipamamahagi kung saan maaari nating isumite ang ating requests o kahilingan. 
paano naman ang mga walang internet access sa bahay? Huwag mangamba dahil merong mga nakalaang drop boxes ang ating paaralan na kung saan maaaring ihulog ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang kanilang requests. Sa mga nais namang mag-donate ng school supplies, maaaring ilagay ang mga ito sa tabi ng drop boxes. Maaari ring mag-donate ng mga kagamitan o cash donation kaakibat ang pagsusumite ng deed of donation form. Pangalawa, mahalaga ang ugnayan ng mga guro at ng mga magulang o tagapangalaga sa programang ito. Gamit ang video calls o chats ay ipahahayag ng mga guro ang adhikain ng programang ito sa mga magulang o tagapangalaga. Maaari ring gawin ang orientation na ito ng face-to-face, -face, kasabay ng schedule ng kuhanan ng mga module. Gaya ng nabanggit, hindi lamang mga bagay ang maaaring i-donate. Pwede ring mag-conduct ng tutorial session, study tips, at iba pang mga kagamitan sa pagkatuto gaya ng mga aklat o kaya ay gadgets. Ikatlo, ang requested needs ng ating mga magulang o tagapangalaga ay ililista ng ating nest focal person. Ang mga coordinator naman ang mag-aayos ng mga ito. Ang advisors ng ating mga mag-aaral, guidance counselor, at iba pang mga guro ay ipaaalam sa ating mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang petsa at oras ng pamimigay ng requested needs na gaganapin sa paaralan. Sabi nga nila, it takes a village to raise a child. Kaya naman aktibo at iba yung pakikilahok ang inaasahan sa pagsasanib puwersa ng paaralan at barangay na siyang tutukoy sa pangangailangan ng bawat Fernandinong mag-aaral at kikilos upang matugunan ito sa tulong at suporta rin ng mga miyembro ng komunidad. Isang malawakang komunidad para sa isang produktibong educational community pantry ay tiyak na lilikha ng iba yung pagkilos upang maging mas magaan at madali ang pagkatuto ng bawat kabataang Fernandino. Kaya naman tandaan, magbigay ayon sa kakayahan, kumuha ayon sa pangangailangan. Fernandino Teens TV Welcome back, Fernandino Teens. This time, we will talk about the importance of interpersonal communication and how it differs from intrapersonal communication. Interpersonal skills are traits you rely on when you interact and communicate with others. They cover a variety of scenarios where communication and cooperation are essential. Communicating with others is an essential skill in business dealings, family affairs, and romantic relationships. Do you often find yourself misunderstanding others? Do you have the difficulty getting your point across clearly? When it comes to communication, what you say and what you do not say are equally important. Being a good listener is quite crucial. Let us have a short activity before we wrap up this lesson. The activity is true or false. Instructions. Determine whether each statement about communication is true or false. Let's have number one. Sign language is only about gestures. Is it true or false? The answer is false. Sign language is a means of communication when spoken communication is impossible or not desirable. The gestures or symbols in sign language are organized in a linguistic way. Number two, we can improve our interpersonal communication skills by being aware of the effects of our words and actions. What is this? It is true or false? Wonderful. The answer is true. Let's have number three. 
Interpersonal communication deals with the interaction between two or more persons. What do you think? Is it true or false? The answer is false. Interpersonal communication is the communication that occurs in our minds. Let's have number four. Interpersonal communication happens when you think and analyze situations. Amazing. The answer is false. Let's have number five. People having a meeting or a discussion demonstrate interpersonal communication. What do you think? Is this true or false? Excellent. The answer is true. Since effective interpersonal communication requires that you have self-awareness, let us study and observe the differences between intrapersonal and interpersonal communication. Let's watch this video. Difference between intrapersonal and interpersonal communication. We have basic comparison, intrapersonal communication, and interpersonal communication. For description, it is a person's inner dialogue. Example, communication that occurs in our mind. For interpersonal communication, it is the exchange of information between two or more people. Requirement, only the individual's internal senses are involved. It requires the nonverbal media to express ideas. It occurs during thinking and analysis of situations. It occurs during meeting and daily conversations with peers. Visibility. It is visible in nature as it only involves an individual's personal thoughts and feelings. It is visible in nature, concerned with. It concerned critical thinking, analysis, and evaluation. It is concerned with the exchange of ideas, information, opinion, feelings, etc. Information flow. It never goes beyond a person's mind. Flows from one person to another. Important aspect. Self-awareness and self-interpretation of thoughts are important in intrapersonal communication. Good communication skills are important in interpersonal communication. Let's have the feedback. There is only individual feedback. There is feedback from the parties involved, numbers of people involved. In intrapersonal communication, it involves only one person. In interpersonal communication, it involves two people or public setting or three or more people. Effective interpersonal communication is necessary to negotiate the challenges of everyday living, whether in your personal, academic, or professional life in the future. The appropriate use of verbal and nonverbal communication can send your messages, thoughts, feelings, and ideas properly and clearly. The key to a happy, less stressful social life is to have the skills in both intrapersonal and interpersonal communications. If you need to talk to yourself, go on. That is intrapersonal communication. It is when we talk to our inner self that we reflect on the things we did and we will do and say which may or may not affect our relationship with other people. Thank you very much, Fernandini Teens. I hope you learned something new today. By the way, here are the references I used for this presentation. Thank you for watching the video, Fernandino Teens, and I am looking forward to a great face-to-face -face interaction with you. This has been Teacher Emil, your language teacher, wishing all of you to have friendly and successful interactions with all of your friends and loved ones. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you for watching Fernandino Teens TV, Season 2.
Bye! Lahat pala ng body language natin ay may ibig sabihin. Kaya nga eh, ngayon, naiintindihan ko na bakit nagtampo ang nanay ni Dino. Nasa tono pala at ekspresyon ng mukha ang naging problema. Kaya dapat tayong maging maingat at mapagmasid sa mga non-verbal at verbal cues sa pakikipag-usap upang matansya natin ang tamang gagawin at sasabihin at paiwasan ang anumang hindi pagkakaintindihan. Tama ka, Dino! Ang dami na naman nating natutuhan sa araw na ito. Kaya naman, Maraming, maraming salamat, sir! Isa na namang makabulhang talakayan ng ating natong hayan, Fernandino Teens. Magkita-kita tayo muli dito lang sa Fernandino Teens TV Season 2 Kung, kung saan ang kabataang Fernandino ay angat sa angking talino. Ang